The scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, and by the way, uh, we have some notes with, with you on your chair there. I'd like you to follow along. I'm obviously going to be saying more than is on that paper, but it will help you and help you remember when you get home today this word, because this is a word today that I'm going to give that has troubled many believers. And I believe God's going to help you out of trouble today. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, this will be our theme uh, for this series, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Now, I want you to know today, church, that this one verse is one of the main reasons why here at Trinity Church, we give altar calls and ask people who are asking God's forgiveness to come and stand at the altar publicly. That's why we do water baptisms publicly. Because there's something about you and I coming out of all that stuff and making a new commitment unto Jesus Christ that breaks from the old life unto the new life. And that's why this Bible says that you did this publicly in front of many witnesses. People in this city need to know that you and I are not what we used to be. We are now under a new banner. It's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are not ashamed of what God is doing in our life. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew and to the Gentile. There's something about coming out from your old life and joining a brand new Christian army to fight a new fight that makes all the difference. We do not fight with nasty words. We do not fight with bombs or guns or napalm. We fight the good fight of faith to see men and women come out of darkness and into God's marvelous light through his dynamic grace. And today in this first message, I want to talk about the fight within, waging war against the flesh, waging war against the flesh, the fight within. Every one of us have a war going on inside of our flesh, and it may be an unusual affection for food. It may be an unusual affection for sexuality in all kinds of ways, inordinate. It may be in the area of anxiety, which is what drives, I believe, depression and what drives suicide. It's an unusual attention to one's self. And this is not getting down on anybody. Depression is real. Anxiety is real. But the truth is today that these are issues of the flesh that God wants to give us victory over. All of it is a war with the flesh. And the war of the flesh is between your ears. Are you with me? It all originates in your thoughts. Thoughts, your thought life. Um, so the battle is engaged there. This is a war in the mind. This battle with the flesh. One of our wonderful young adults, Nelson Ruiz, uh, gave a testimony this week, and I want you to see it. He talked about this personal battle that he believes God has recently given him victory over. But this is a battle that so many are waging today. Please watch just a few moments for Nelson's testimony. Hi, my name is Nelson H. Ruiz, 
and in 2007, I first came to Trinity, Miami, but I was just not interested at the time. Then in 2010, I came back. I gave my life to Christ. I started joining team. I got plugged in. I got connected and I started serving. But although all these things were a benefit for me, I was still struggling with immorality. It was a fight to break these chains. I was figuring out my life. Why am I here? Who am I? What's inside of me? What is my calling? What's my purpose? But the things I was dealing with were blocking my roads. I wasn't able to see clearly. So I would ask God to break these chains, to work with me and inside of me. Who can I go to for accountability? Who can I talk to about my vices? Sure enough, as time went by, God started showing me things that I've never seen before. He started showing me purpose. He started showing me what I was made for. And if I let those things go, I could become the man that God had called me to be. I'm so grateful to say that it's been a year now and that I've been free from these bondages. I've been free from immorality because I got grounded in the word here at Trinity Miami and because I was able to put time between my old life and my new life, I've been delivered from these vices. I allow God to take his time to work in me. I'm so thankful that he did work with me. Now I'm able to preach to others what God did inside of me. I'm now able to relate and be relational with others that are going through what I went through. I'm able to encourage them and be there for them because God was once there for me. He took his time on me. I'm so much more mature in God's love now. Wow. wow, isn't that great? In defense of Nelson and in defense of me and in defense of every one of you in this room, all of us battle in the flesh. We, this is a war that we are constantly faced with. The Bible says this. See if this resonates with you. Romans chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. The apostle writes these words. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Can I get a giant hallelujah? hallelujah. My Lord, when I read that passage, I go, oh, oh. Is that me talking or Paul talking? Whenever you think about looking at a man like Nelson and going, are you kidding? He's, he's done those things. Stop. Knock it off. You're no better. I'm no better. By the grace of God, I am what I am today. Now, I want to give you, I believe, some handles on defeating this thing called the lust of the flesh and this battle on the inside. Um, the, many people say, well, what are the works of the flesh? Hello, here we go. Let me give it to you. Galatians 5, 19, 20, and 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Paul's going, and whatever else. All right? When you read that passage, you go, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, I know about that stuff. So, what is it that God wants to do in our lives to help us fight, fight, fight today? First of all, I believe God's calling us to study the fight. Study your enemy. Know your enemy. Know what you're up against. Study the fight. 
What am I up against? What is my opponent? So what does the Bible say about the flesh's uh, leadership and the spirit's leadership in my life? Well, there's a passage of scripture that I want to read today. I want you to look at it with me. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And in this passage of scripture, there are <coughs> parallel <coughs> um, opportunities. One is to be led of the flesh. You'll see all the opportunities there and what it provides. And one is to be led of the spirit. You'll see the opportunities there and what it provides. So look at it with me. Read along. Out, now I'll read out loud. You read quietly with me from Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his son Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned Jesus sin in the flesh on his watch alive. He condemned sin by his own sinless life in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Did you hear what I said? If you're going to be driven and led by the flesh, the scripture says you cannot please God. Now, this passage shows the categories. I mentioned it earlier, and I'm not going to put this on the screen. I just want you to listen to the two categories as marked out in Romans chapter 8. And you decide, what do you want to be led by? Do you want to be led by the flesh? Do you want to be led by the spirit? Here are the earmarks of the flesh. First of all, if you let the flesh rule you, the Bible says that everything in the flesh originates from the law of sin and death. So if you are living in the flesh, everything about you is sin and death. You're dying while you're walking. If you're led by the flesh, the law was powerless because the flesh weakened it. You see, our flesh steps on the law of God. God's do this, don't do this. The flesh just hammers it all day long. The flesh says, I will not. Because the Bible says that flesh is hostile towards God. Enmity against God. Cannot please God. So your flesh weakened God's law. That's the Old Testament. Weakened it. All right. Look at this. The flesh has been condemned by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. So Jesus in his spirit flesh he who knew no sin became sin for us on the cross and his life on this planet and on the cross condemned the law and sin and the flesh just condemned it you're dead i finished you off is what jesus is saying those who live by the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. Go back to what we just read, Galatians 5, 19, 20, 21. All that stuff. Right? The mind controlled by the flesh dies. Your thought life dies. It's dragged to the mud and dies. Your mind controlled by the flesh is, I said, hostile to God refuses to do God's will. 
can't please God. Some of you today sit in this room, and that's, that's the category you're living in. Say, are you, are you hammering me, Pastor? The Word of God is. I'm your loving pastor. I'm the shepherd. I have no ought in me towards you. I've sinned like you have sinned. I don't want to be led by the flesh, however. Okay? So, now look at this. Here's the other category in the same passage, Romans 8, 1 through 8. If you are led of the Spirit, number one, there's no condemnation in you. No condemnation. You're not walking around 24-7. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't. Oh, that thought. Oh, my God. Jesus, God. No condemnation. Number one. Secondly, the Bible says those who are led of the Spirit, hmm, Spirit gives life. You wake up in the morning. Man, you say, I'm going casual to church today. Feeling so good. Spirit gives life. There's no death. One day you'll die physically, but you're alive right now in Jesus. And no matter how old you get on this planet, you're alive in Jesus. Full of Jesus. Alive. The Spirit gives life. Spirit sets you free. I'm walking in freedom. I live in freedom. I'm not living in bondage. Number four, Jesus was the sin offering that condemns sin in the flesh. The thing that wants to take you down, flesh, has already been condemned by Jesus. I'm not ruled by you. You've already been condemned by Jesus Christ, my Lord. I'm not your slave. Look at this one. Those who live by the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit wants. What does the Spirit want? Galatians 5 and verse 22 and 3. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm driven by love, joy, peace, forbearance, faithfulness, goodness, meekness. I'm telling you, that's that's what I want to be. I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to be led by love and joy and peace. I don't want worry to dominate my day. I don't want anxiety to dominate my day. I'm a man of God. I'm, I'm walking in freedom. I'm walking in deliverance. I'm walking in victory today. Hallelujah. And last of all, a mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. A life controlled by the flesh is sin and death. A life controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want to live by? You want to live by life and peace? That's the Holy Ghost lifestyle. You want to live by sin and death? That's the flesh lifestyle. All right. So how is it that we conquer this issue? All right? Because what we're battling today, we're battling this issue of the flesh, and the enemy wants you to die, die, die. You and I want to, because we're driven by the Spirit, live, live, live. So what I'm proposing this afternoon is that you and I are going to have to fight, fight, fight in order to live, live, live so we won't die, die, die. Now, if you believe that, say amen. I'm just telling you, this is what God's will is for us, to live. And in order to live, he's called us to fight. Okay, so first of all, we study the flesh. We study the fight. What are we up against? Secondly... We've got to feed the spirit. Feed the spirit. Here's where the fight is engaged even in a greater way. If you will feed the spirit, I believe in time you can starve the flesh. You feed the spirit with the right stuff, you will starve the flesh in time. So the first component of feeding your spirit life is 
the written word of God. Daily reading of the word of God. Because your spirit is hungry. All right? Your spirit's hungry. And you know what? When you're led of the flesh, your spirit is going to be craving candy. Candy. The candy, the ice cream, the cocaine, the pornography, the candy. It's easy to eat candy. Easy to eat ice cream. Easy to do pot. Easy to do dope. Snort cocaine. Pornography. Oh, I did it again. It's all easy. Now, the consequences are devastating. Because it just sucks you to the planet and kills you in time. But right now, it's easy. And if you go with the flesh, it's all easy. And your spirit gets filled up with so many spiritual calories that you end up weighing about 9 billion pounds in the spirit. And you can't even get out of bed, much less witness for Jesus. But the word of God feeds your spirit the things of God. And it's hard. It's hard. Daily reading of the word of God is just hard. All right? You all sitting there, oh, it's not hard. Oh, no, pastor, where are you coming from? Don't sit there and look at me like that. You know it's hard. I dare say there's a bunch of you in this room that don't crack the word between Sundays. Now, if you think that we're battling to crack the word, do you think any of those people out there are? No, they're on candy. Hoo-hoo. Ice cream. Cocaine. Women. Men. Pornography. No, that's easy. That's what they're into. The word of God feeds the spirit. Now, I've got a good friend. His name is T.J. Wilson. T.J. comes and works Pastor Robin and me out about three days a week. He would gladly come five days a week, but we always figure out reasons why we can't those other two. <laughs> and they're really good reasons. I, I, today, uh, uh, and then we make something up usual. And it's not Robin's fault, it's mine. TJ had four stints in battle. Uh, twice in Iran, or Iraq, twice in Afghanistan. And he was uh, high rank when he finished after 20-something years, but he was always infantry, always in the battle, always boots on the ground, always guns, always ready to fight. And I talked to him this week, and he told me about trying to feed himself in battle, physically feed himself in battle, food. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. In other words, when you first come to Christ, you begin to crave the word of God. And it, initially, it's, it's the simple stuff. For God so loved the world. Oh, I'm going to memorize that. You need to go in the commandments. And then pretty soon, it gets thicker. And I don't really understand that. And I I'm not sure. Oh, that, that's deep. Okay, I'm done. And what happens is you put that milk of the word aside. And you start listening to Pastor Marty every day on the radio. Or Sister Kitty Lou, who has a ministry of Levitical dance. And whoa. And just... You get into spiritual stuff that is just, you, 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 it's like you're a, you're a weakling being led by weaklings. It's the word of God that brings power and anointing and breaks the curse of sin, breaks the curse of the flesh. But it's hard. It's not candy. Not cocaine. It's not pornography. It's not the easy stuff. It's not getting high because that's easy. It's devastating. It's easy, but it's, it'll kill you, but it's easy. No, the word is tough. And TJ tells me 
that in the middle of bullets flying over his head, they're cracking out their meals and they're called in the army MREs, meals ready to eat. They're in a package. You can imagine. This is not mama's home cooking. Trust me. This wasn't warmed up in a microwave. Trust me. This doesn't taste salty necessarily or spicy in any way. It is bland. It's lousy. It's chunky. It's difficult. And it tastes bad. But you know what? He said it's full of calories. It's full of positive carbohydrates. It's full of protein. And he said when you're one day I was eating to grow. Now I'm eating to live in the middle of battle. And that's what the Bible's all about. He used to be in all that simple stuff, the milk of the word for God so loved the world. That was so you could grow. But now you're eating to live every day. I got to live through this battle every day. I got to fight through this battle every day. I'm going to do the tough thing every day. He said, I'm going to tell you something, Pastor, when those bullets are flying over your head, you're knocking about whatever you can knock back. You've got five layers of cl clothes on. It's 100 degrees outside in the sun. You've got a helmet on your head. You're protected from the sun. You're protected from all kinds of weaponry. But he said, I'm telling you, you're miserable. You're losing weight while you're fighting, but you're chunking down this hard, nasty stuff, and it's giving you life on the inside. It's keeping you alive on the inside. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. And the question is, what are you going to eat? Church, what are you going to eat? I have begged you for five years to get into the soap daily soap journals. For years, I studied eight to 15 to 20 hours a week in the word of God, but to preach and to teach. But for years and years, I did not have a solid daily devotional life that did not include the study for the message on Sunday or the teaching between Sundays. No, it was a, a preparation for what I was going to do publicly. But I'm going to tell you something. Five years ago, I got hooked on daily devotions through the soap journal, scripture, observation, application, prayer. And every day I read a portion of scripture. Every day I meditate on that portion. Every day I pray about it. I write about it every day. Many of you receive my daily devotionals. Those were all written by me. I've developed, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I only boast in the cross of Christ. What I'm saying is you're getting your, you're getting your language in your pen. It's one thing to get up and speak. In, it's not, it's an another thing to speak through your pen and it takes time you've got to write every day journal every day put your thoughts on paper every day when you're dead that's all going to be left of you that's all you'll pass on to your kids your grandkids your great that's your legacy whatever you put on paper let's say well, well gra granny was a great woman she was mom tell me more about granny that's all they got but baby if you wrote it down here, you read it yourself, sweetheart. That's what she gave us. That's what she wrote down. That's what he wrote down. That's what he told us every day. Go read it, son. You read God's word, and then you meditate on God's word. God, what does this mean to me? The Bible says in Joshua 1.8, keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. I have people come to me every week. Pastor, can you help us financially? We're broke. We got nothing. We, we talk about prosperity. We never have it. I say, do you have a daily devotional life? What's that? Never crack the book. Never meditate in the book. I, folks, I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not down. I'm trying to encourage today. Get into this book. Get into God's word. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, friends. It is what feeds your spirit. It feeds your Holy Ghost man. It keeps you in the spirit. And you don't get locked into the flesh. Huh. When you are following Pastor Marty or Sister Susie Q on the radio or television, there's just so much they can do because they are men and women too. When you get into the Word and lead, learn the Word for yourself, I'm going to tell you something, it's a whole new ball game, sweetheart. 
you learn the word of God for yourself. And then as you know the word daily through your research, now prophets and apostles and teachers and pastors and evangelism will come alongside of you to help you with systematic theology and putting it together in an order that makes sense for you. Otherwise, it's just a piece here and a bomb here and a little hand over, boom, whoo. Try to, ooh, that was bless. Ooh, that was a blessing. I don't need any more of those kind of blessings. Ooh, I need, I need something that will give me control over the forces of hell. Hallelujah. Seven days a week. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, "Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But we can plow through it in prayer, in meditation, and in daily devotion." Let me, let me say this. I got I to move ahead. Daily scripture meditation and prayer feeds the spirit and starves the flesh. Would you read that out loud with me? Everybody in the count of three. One, two, three. Daily scripture reading, meditation, and prayer feeds the spirit and starves the flesh. So what will you give your spirit tomorrow morning? Candy? Cocaine? You're going to give it the word of God, meditation, prayer. That's going to take the place, drive the lust of the flesh out, and allow the spirit to rule and reign. All right, here's the last thing. If we're going to get victory over this flesh war on the inside, war within. Remember, you are fighting for your personal relationship with Jesus to grow and not for perfection. So many followers of Christ believe that they're in it for perfection. Oh, I messed up. Oh, no, 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 no. We weren't going for perfection. Don't let anybody tell you that. We're going to develop and grow our personal relationship with Jesus every day. So that every day we're deeper in the Lord. We grow closer to Jesus. We're more in love with Jesus. And on those days that we just had a tough time serving Jesus, we plowed through it anyway. And we wake up tomorrow morning in strength, in power, in victory to live for Jesus another day. Here's how the apostle wrote it in Ephesians 3, verses 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Do you begin to understand just how high God is and deep God is and wide God is and loving God is. And so that you begin to move into the measure of the love of God with God in him. And when you think you've got it, there's more, there's more, there's, I can't give it up. There's so much more. I want the fullness of God, not the fullness of candy. I want the fullness of God in me tell you a story we got to go I want the band to come up if you would so I was a young youth pastor pastor Rob and I were living in Sacramento California we had been married two and a half years earlier we moved to California in 1975 and uh, I was the youth director there. And the pastor had uh, roles for the associate pastors. And every day the pastors had, you know, a, a list of things that we were supposed to go. Over. And each pastor, you know, once a month would, would be on call that week. 
And I don't know how they divided up. I just know about every four or five weeks I was on call. So I had the phone, all right, so, uh, or beeper or something. And if there was an emergency, whatever hour of the night it was, I got the call. And then uh, each week we had a different group of people we had to visit in the hospital or who were in um, resting nurse homes, nursing homes. And one such gentleman was named Willard Spencer. He was at his home. He was not under hospice care, but he was infirmed and um, had moved into early Social Security. I guess he was about 50 when I met him, 53 when he passed away. For many years, we call him Brother Spencer. He was a big, tall, lanky guy, had been a logger in the state of Oregon. We lived in California. He'd lived in Oregon, moved down with his family some years earlier, very infirmed. And uh, he was a church planner, never asked a dime from any church that he started. Uh, he would start a church, and while he was in a logging camp, he would, he would stay in that logging camp for, say, a year, two years. And once he got the church that he started, up to about 50 or 60 people where the people could support him financially, he would hand the church off to a young man and his wife, and he would move on to the next logging camp, start another church. And just a tough guy. And in his late 20s, uh, he'd done a number of these churches all over the state of Oregon. I talked to leaders who knew about him, said, yes, the story's true. We've got churches today that are flowing and life-giving because of him. And late 20s, he was cleaning out a chemical truck at the logging camp one day, and there was an explosion. They would empty these trucks, the chemicals, and then they would have to be washed down, cleaned out before they went back to be refilled. And during this event, there was some kind of explosion. Several of the men died, and Willard Spencer was uh, sickened by it. it. Took him a long time to get back to work. His lungs were impacted and his kidneys were impacted by the chemicals ingested in this explosion. In time, he became too infirmed to work, and I met him when he was 50. He looked like he was 85. Most of the teeth were gone on his head, and hair disheveled and just broken. His family lived on public assistance. And I would go to visit him, and when I first started visiting him, I had to visit him. That was my job. I had to go see Brother Spencer. But after a couple times over a period of years, I realized that it was my blessing to go visit him because I'd walk into his house. He'd say, oh, Pastor Rich, come on over. You bring your Bible, son. Did you bring your Bible? Uh, yes, sir. I brought my Bible. Okay, sit down. And I'd sit down and say, today we're going to look at the book of Romans. This guy would talk on the book. He'd just, cool. Oh, I don't know where he learned all this stuff. I mean, just he knew more than my Bible college. Team. I'm telling you, the, the guy was brilliant. And I always felt so uplifted when I would leave Brother Spencer. We'd get ready to leave. I'd say, well, Brother Spencer, uh, let, let me just pray for you. I know you're really hurting, and I'm not. And uh, so I'm going to pray for you because I'm well and you're sick. And he'd say, well, before you pray for me, Pastor, why don't I pray for you? Well, I'm telling you, he would lay his hands on me, and it was over. I would always forget to pray for him when I left. Why would you even pray after he prayed that prayer? My God, I mean, he would take you into the throne room of God, sit you down in front of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and talk to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all about you for about five minutes and finish, and you go, thank you, God, where Jesus. Oh, yeah, that was a prayer. Okay, I mean, it was amazing. And finally, after three years, it was very bad. They put him in the hospital. And he was down to the end, and uh, one of the associates and me went to see him the last day of his life. And uh, towards the end of his life, that last six months, when you would see him, is the, the look of, of flesh, the color of flesh. He was, happened to be Caucasian, and, and that pigmentation was, was kind of gone. He was kind of a gray and green color. I can't explain it, but it just... Like it was just the death, the look of death. You know, it's gray and green. 
And uh, we walked in the room that day, and it felt like that gray green was emanating into the room. That's what it felt. It was like a spirit of death. And we walked in, and, and his wife said, uh, Willard, it's Pastor Rich and Pastor uh, Michael. And he looked like he was dead. He motioned for us to come over. So we came over, and Michael was on one side. I was on the other side of the bed. And he kept going like this, kept going. So we kept getting close. Finally, kept getting. So finally, we put our ear by his mouth. He was so weak. And Brother Spencer began to sing a song that was his testimony. It was an old time song. And it said these words. I won't try to sing it. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. And he fell asleep. And as Mike and I pulled out of the room after prayer I will tell you as God is my witness church the green gray was gone in that room and I felt like angelic forces had filled Willard Spencer's hospital room because of the brilliance of the light as I walked out Weeping, I said to Mike, he sang his testimony. That was his desire, that the image of God would be imprinted deep on his heart. And men and women, that's something that doesn't happen by those who live on candy and pornography and cocaine. And the stuff that's easy that ends up killing you. It only comes to those who are willing to do the hard stuff. Who are willing to do the stuff that's just hard stuff, man. Bullets are flying over your head and you're cracking open a piece of something that you can't stand the smell of it, but you're chugging it. And I'm telling you, the life is coming back into you. The ability to battle against all hell and darkness comes into you. And you say, Jesus, thank you. I've got this. Hallelujah. That's the power of God. That's called living in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to draw, bow your heads with me as we come to a close this afternoon. With your head bowed and your eyes closed today, I wonder today how many in the room would just say, Pastor Rich? Uh, flesh has been running my life. Flesh is ruling me. I'm a slave to flesh. I'm the candy guy. I'm the candy woman. I'm done. I, I'm just, I didn't realize. I got cavities all over my heart, all over my kidneys, all over my, I, everywhere in my flesh, there's cavities all over my life. I gotta, I gotta get in the spirit, Pastor Rich. I wanna win this war within, this thing of the flesh. I want to be a woman of God. I want to be a man of God. Pastor, today I need to be forgiven. I need Jesus to forgive me today. If that's you today and you'd like for me to include you in my final prayer, you need to be forgiven today. You're not going to be a slave to the flesh anymore. Say, I want God. I need God's forgiveness today. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now quickly. Raise it as high as you can so I can see it. I see yours and yours and yours and I see yours and I see yours there. I see yours right here. How many more? You'd raise it real high with these others. I see yours over here and yours and yours and yours there. I see yours, sir, on the aisle back there. Right there, ma'am. You can put it down. Anybody else at all? I see your hand over here. You can put it down. Right there, ma'am. You can put it down. How about the overflow? Anybody in the overflow? I could see it out there. Yes, I see hands going 
going up. God bless your heart. Uh, anybody in the bleacher section at all, raise it high if I could see it right now. Praise the Lord today. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. I'll wait five more seconds. Anybody else at all? You haven't raised your hand yet, but Spirit of God's dealing with you. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. God. Stand to your feet with me if you would, church. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask as we sing this song, that if you raised your hand, that if you were serious, that you want to step out of the flesh and into the spirit, you're ready. You're serious about it. On the first word of this song, higher. Lord, we lift you higher. I want you to step from where you are to the aisle nearest you and come and stand with me right here. Stay with me. We're going to pray it together. You say, well, I can't do that. People will see me. That's the whole point. There's something about walking away from where you were to where you want to be in Jesus that will make all the difference. You come. If you're serious about it, come right now as we sing it. Higher, Lord, we lift you higher above any this altar right now would you just come and lay a hand on a shoulder these are men and women who've been through the war as well they're going to stand with you hallelujah i'm going to ask everybody in the room to reach your hands towards this altar we're going to pray the prayer of faith right now believe god to break every chain father in the name of jesus i thank you for every man and every woman who made their way down to this altar today to say, hey, I've had enough of the flesh. I want the Spirit. And today, God, I pray that by the power of Almighty God, the power of God would now literally flow deep into their lives. We rebuke every lie from hell. I pray, God, right now that victory, 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 victory would come. Forgiveness would come. Change would come. Transformation would come. In the name of Jesus, I want everybody at this altar and everybody in this room to pray this prayer out loud with me right now. If you're watching online and God's talking to you, I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me right now. Jesus is talking. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I've, sinned. I've sinned. I'm not proud of it. Proud of it. But, I admit it. but I admit it. Today, Today I lay my sin lay down. My sin Take down. it, I pray. Take it, I, pray. I, don't I, I don't want it anymore. I reach to heaven, reach to, heaven. To, receive to receive your forgiveness. To take the place of my sin. Of my sin. I, ask I ask that you would accept me, Lord, accept into, me, Lord. into your wonderful family. Your wonderful family. Today, Jesus, Today, Jesus, I give my life completely to you. I'm yours, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, put your hands together right now. Give God praise for the victory. Hey, 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 look at If you meant that prayer, you're, you're released from those chains. I mean that with all my heart. I can tell you based upon the word of God. Now, you got to fight, fight, fight to stay in the spirit. Got to fight, 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 all right? I know he's already done, won the battle, but... We're going to have to decide, I'm not putting candy in anymore. I'm going to start putting the word in. I'm going to get strong in the spirit.